welcome to chair yoga. <laughs> so you're going to find a chair. Now, with, um, this is my dining room chair, and I did, I did not notice this uh, <laughs> before I bought them. But if I sit all the way back on my dining room chairs, my feet don't actually touch the ground. So <laughs> I just slide forward far enough that my feet rest on the floor. And generally, I just try to stack my ankle right under the knee. So if my knees want to be a little wider, I just put the feet a little wider. And if it feels better to sit in tighter, you can do that. I just try to find the place where it feels like, uh, it, like it just relaxes a little bit so that my um, pelvis is stable, my spine can just kind of gently um, do its thing and uh, balance itself in my pelvis so that I can relax the shoulders. Now my favorite mudra for chair yoga um, to start with is to take the palms and just put them flat down on the on thighs. Um, this is called the mudra of calm abiding. And you can do it in a seated pose too. It's a good meditation um, position to put your hands in in the event that... Hold on. <laughs> you know, a little scattered. There's been a lot of distractions, like small creatures making noise or work or other things. And those distractions are sort of still playing at your brain. Uh, putting your palms face down is a good kind of grounding um, way to go. Now, if you're feeling a little sluggish or a little sleep sleepy, you could do the other, uh, the other way. Put the palms up and then you could either um, join a finger or two to the thumb. And that's a way to sort of, um, you know, maybe it's just a little bit, it's a little bit more, uh, you have to pay a little more attention to putting your palms face up because there springs a little more of your awareness there. And so choosing the mudra that's right for you in this moment, or just no mudra, you could put one palm in inside the other and rest them in your lap as well. And then just check in with your body. And by that, what I mean is you might like systematically scan through your body and look for places that you might be holding. Like maybe there's a little bit of tension around your eyebrows or your jaw is a little tight. Or you can just become aware of the overall quality of your body. Is it relaxed or tense? Does anything start to make its way? Sometimes when we're busy, there's little pains or little achy places that don't, um, we don't pay attention to. And once we stop for a few moments and pay attention, like we might notice, oh yeah, my right hip is a little achy or my left knee is a little funny. And so we're just taking inventory or coming home. We're noticing, like I'm noticing my left shoulder is slightly more rotated forward. So I might pay a little more attention to my left shoulder today. Let's do that for about two more breaths. Drop your chin down and notice how the back of the neck responds. If it feels like your whole body wants to round forward, see if you can resist that urge and keep your spine relatively neutral. Now we're gonna do one set at a time today. So we're gonna roll the head up and over one shoulder. I went for the left shoulder. Yeah. And then we're gonna come back. You can do either shoulder, but go up and over one. So it's stretching out the right side of my neck, but my left ear is close to the left shoulder. We're just rolling the head up and over. You can go as far around as makes sense. And then come back. I'm gonna do that one more time on that side. Now, I'm noticing that when I get to right here, I feel a little stronger stretch on my neck. So I'm gonna pause right there and drop my right arm out. So I'm giving that spot a little bigger stretch. Now it shifted a little bit, so I'm gonna gently turn my chin up. There is another spot to pay attention to. I'm just noticing these little places that feel a little extra tight. I'm gonna go a little further forward. There's another spot. The cool thing about neck stretches to me is they don't take very long to be effective. Okay, so I'm gonna put my hand back into my lap, bring my chin back to the center, and then I'm gonna float my head up. I invite you to join me. 
and then just pause for a moment and pay attention. So for me, there's a very slight change, just a little bit less tension on that right side. My shoulder feels a little lower, just feels a little softer quality to the right, especially if I compare it over here to that left side that I was noticing earlier, it's a little bit um, more um, tender. So we're gonna do the same thing, but on the other side. So we're gonna drop the chin towards the chest and then we're gonna roll the head carefully up and over the opposite shoulder. Now those muscles that I stretched earlier might be a little bit tender, so you're being mindful of that. Going up and over. And just really mindfully, and you know, you can go really slow or a little bit more peppy, but just paying attention. Okay, so we're gonna pick a spot so I'm going to go back to this spot right here where I can feel a little bit of tension right here on the top of my shoulder. It's almost working its way into the place I found tender earlier. So when I drop my arm, I'm going to notice if that changes. It's actually, it's pr you know, for me, it's pretty nice. It actually feels very pleasant. I'm not feeling a lot of tenderness. And again, you might, you know, take a breath and that spot feels great. And then you might move your head just a little bit and there's another spot you're gonna pay attention to. And I'm noticing also that the tension that I'm feeling in my shoulder or this little bit of tenderness has nothing to do with my neck. So that tells me that the stickiness is in my shoulder blade and my back muscles and not in my neck. So that's good news. I mean, it's just news. <laughs> you might know what's happening a little bit more. Okay, so I'm gonna gently put my hand back and roll my chin all the way down and then come back up because it felt like I was pretty complete. Okay, so again, just noticing the quality and my neck feels nice. I don't feel anything that feels really tender or crummy. So now I'm gonna start to work with these muscles that I suspect are the ones that are tight. So I'm gonna start with just shoulder circles. So I'm gonna take the shoulders up, around, and back. And just whatever direction you picked it to go in, just start there. And make big circles with your shoulder blades. And the arm bones are along for the ride. And I'm trying to get my shoulder blades at this point to come way off to the side so I can feel these muscles tighten in. And then as I pick the shoulder blades up, I'm noticing that. And then rolling the shoulder blades back, my arm bones might turn out to go along with that. And letting that happen. Okay. So then when I get up here to the top, I'm going to pause for a second and go the other direction. Up, around, and back. And for whatever reason, there is a difference when you rotate the shoulders around in each direction. Good. So we're going to do two more like that. And again, I'm just noticing along the way, are there places that I can tell are the source of trouble for me, <laughs> and also just releasing tension from that area. Oh, cause that feels good. So we're gonna take one arm and just give it kind of a shake, a little jiggle. And I'm trying to shake it so that the whole arm shakes and I can feel it all the way up to the shoulder. Okay. And then I'm gonna do the same thing, but on the other side. So I'm gonna shake the arm out. Some that are kind of faster, a little jigglier and somewhere I move that upper arm bone a little bit in the socket of the shoulder. Shoulders are interesting joints. The, there is a little cavity in the back of the shoulder blade where the upper arm bone kind of sits, the clavicle, the collarbone makes kind of a little, sh you know, um, forward part, front part of the joint. But it also is not particularly, <laughs> well, it's very mobile, right? So this is a joint that's intended for mobility. We want to be able to move that arm a lot. Speaking of which, we're going to take the arms and we're going to make some really big circles. So whatever size circle you can make without knocking over things in your house um, or um, without causing trouble or trauma if you've got some impingements in your shoulders, um, whether from injuries or other things. Now pause at the bottom. We're going to go the other direction. Same size circle if you can. Just whatever range of motion you can get. It's kind of a nice big circle. Okay, so we're gonna pause at the bottom and we're gonna start with a little bit more of a medium circle. Now you can do the medium circles down a little lower, more on the kind of shoulder light height, or you can actually make the medium circles up a little higher. I like to move through the whole range. Now circle the other direction. 
But some of you might be more comfortable with a little lower shoulder situation. Okay. Now we're going to come to shoulder height or just below it and we're going to do very tiny little circles and try to make the top of the shoulder do that work. Go the other direction. Okay, and then drop your arms and you might do one more little shake on each side. Now for me, when I do that, um, it's, you know, it's sometimes it's challenging. <laughs> But there's a feeling of lightness to my arms and a feeling of freedom and I'm not feeling that impingement in my shoulder in the way I was earlier. And so I'm going to chalk that up as good medicine. But if you're feeling tenderness or oh, some ouchy spots in your shoulder, then you might need some more attention to those places. Okay, so we're going to do some wrist actions. So we're going to circle the wrist just in kind of a circular shape, elliptical, whatever you want to call that shape. <laughs> Go the other direction. Now we're going to try to move the wrist through kind of a wave action. So we're going to lace the fingers together and move in kind of a wave. And the elbows can get involved, but we want to make sure the wrist goes through these kind of wave-like patterns. Now switch which hand is doing the most of the motion, so you're just going to go the other direction. Don't think about it too much because your brain will <laughs> try to make that harder than it is. Okay, so then we're going to stop, okay? Stop in the name of love. You can either hold onto your fingers or onto the palm, or you can include the thumb. I'm going to just hold the fingers because it feels nice, and pull the hand backwards as you push out through the bottom part of your arm. Only go as far as your wrist says is okay to go. If there's sharp shooting pain, that's too far. If your hand falls asleep, probably too far. It might be a different issue, though. Okay, so we're going to let go, and then I'm going to kind of bring the hand this way. I put my thumb on my arm bone just to provide structure there. because it's a tender place, wrists are tender. Especially if you do a lot of work on a computer or on your phone. And then I'm gonna do a little um, massage for each of the mounds of my fingers. I'm gonna start with the thumb because that's the one that needs the massage the most. And just massaging the thumb joint. And then I'm going to come around and just massage the pads or the mounds where the finger bone meets the hand joint, right? Just massaging in those areas. And then I'm going to give my wrist itself a little massage. Now the way that I massage the wrist is that I squeeze the, um, the place where the bones come together with the arm bones. Just right in that little channel, kind of squeeze them a little massage in that action. Almost like you're milking a cow. <laughs> I don't know if you've ever milked a cow, that might be a bad reference. But kind of squeeze, squeeze, you can come around the side, come around this side. Okay, so we're going to do that same thing, oh, it feels good, to the other side. So start with the mound of your thumb and massage in those tissues, especially if you text a lot. <laughs> this is a good massage, oh, little thumbs. <laughs> or maybe video games too, some people play, are maybe playing more video games than usual, being at home. Uh, so there might be a little bit more tenderness from the game controls. Okay, and then massaging around the knuckles um, on the hand. Just the little oh, mounds of the fingers. Okay, and then we're going to massage the wrist on the side. Now my right hand's a little stronger than my left hand, so my left arm always gets the nicer massage. <laughs> but my poor little left hand's going to do its best to give my right wrist a nice massage. I like to go up the thumb and up the side of the hand a little bit as well. Okay, so now we're going to just move the fingers and it's almost, you know, like a um, cartoon piano playing. <laughs> move the fingers and then spread the fingers out as wide as you can. Try to really get some space in between these um, three spaces and between those four fingers. The thumb is used to moving outward, but the fingers sometimes hang together like a mitten. Okay, and then we're going to squeeze the palms together or squeeze the hands together like little fists and then spread them out and try to get space in between the four fingers, right? Okay, and then squeeze them in. I'm gonna do that one more time. Spread them out, try to get as much space in between those four fingers as possible, especially these three littler ones. Okay, and then shake that all out in the hands. Okay, and then notice how your hands feel. And again, like a sort of light feeling or like a little more fluid feeling, that's what we're going for. If there's tenderness, you might pay particular attention, a little bit more kind of kind massage. You can even um, 
rub warm oil into your hands. Um, sesame oil or even olive oil would work um, at night just to give your hands a little nourishing, kind of slippery massage. Um, it can be helpful for joints. And if you happen to have um, castor oil, that's supposed to be really good for tender joints. I don't know if you've got castor oil at your house though. <laughs> that, that's a throwback to the older generations. They might have it. <laughs> so in any case, we're done with the shoulders and the arms. So now we're going to start to kind of work with our spine. Now, if I tilt the front of my pelvis forward, so it's like I'm trying to dump the bowl of my pelvis forward, that creates what's called extension in my spine. Okay. So my spine responds with this kind of cobra shape. And then if I dump my pelvis the other way, I tilt the back of the pelvis backwards, that creates this flex shape in the spine, which sometimes we call cat pose, okay? So we're gonna go from a cobra, spreading open the chest, to a cat, and you're rocking back and forth on your pelvis. So if you don't have a lot of movement on your chair, I do, because I can rock right up onto the wooden support here and then back into the softer part of the cushion. So it gives me a little bit of room to move. If your chair is designed a little differently, you might have to slide right to the edge of it. So you're just gonna go back and forth, opening up the chest with the cobra shape and really kind of trying to round that upper back and that lower back oh, in that cat shape. <laughs> Two more, there's one, mm, and here's the other. Okay, so then sitting back up nice and tall, making sure there's even weight, you know, kind of distributed between your feet and your hips. We're gonna do this little movement here now. What I'm trying to do is move the rib cage. So I'm not swinging my arm bones, that's what that looks like. And I'm not turning my pelvis, that's what that looks like. Instead, I wanna isolate the pelvis, let the arms hang heavy, and rotate the ribs, okay? And sometimes we, um, as we get older, we may not move in these kind of twisting ways because it can be a little more tender. And so you're gonna move just, maybe it's just a teeny tiny little range of motion, but you just move in your range of motion Spine is um, designed to move in six different patterns. So we've done two, flexion and extension. Now we're doing two more, rotation in each direction. And we're gonna pause in a moment. So one <laughs> more time there, and then you're gonna turn to whatever direction you're heading in next and pause. Sit up taller, and then we're gonna see if we can turn just this upper part of the back, just the upper back around. Now I'm gonna do this very and unique thing with my shoulder blades. The front shoulder I'm gonna bring forward, the back shoulder I'm gonna bring backward. And it's almost like I'm drawing a f um, an infinity symbol between my two shoulder blades when I do that. So I feel this kind of interesting stretch in my upper back or shoulders. Now don't overdo your lower back. If your hip starts to come up off the chair, definitely sink back in and don't worry about turning that part so much. Concentrate on just the shoulders. If your hands land on places like the chair or your thigh, that's fine too. We're gonna take two more breaths here. Now we're gonna unwind the shoulders first and then unwind the twist. And we're just gonna pause for a second and just move a little bit. I do these little baby cat co cobras. And then I might do like a little side to side swish of my rib cage. If you've never moved your rib cage independently, give it a try. Feels really good. <laughs> And then maybe when you are feeling up to it, you can take a belly dancing class and they'll teach you how to do that really good. I'm not as good as they are. Ooh. Okay, so then we're gonna do a little washing machine, just a few of them, two more, last one. And then we're gonna turn to the opposite direction. Again, you're gonna sit down into your sit bones, get really tall. We're gonna see if we can just turn just the upper part of the back a little bit more. And then this back shoulder's going backward and the front shoulder's coming forward. And again, I might just leave my arms dangling or it might be that I can hold on to something like the chair or my thigh, that's fine. So drawing that shoulder blade into almost that look, kind of the, the sensation in my upper back is almost like I'm trying to draw a figure eight between my two shoulder blades. So I'm digging it, but you may not feel it that way. You might feel something very different. <laughs> my brain likes images. <laughs> So we're gonna do a couple more breaths like that. And as I kind of sit here, I can do a little bit more with just the shoulder blades. Again, be mindful of not overdoing your low back. Last breath here. And then we're gonna release the pressure, come on out of there, do those little movements oh, oh, with the ribs or little baby cat cobras. Oh, 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 oh. Right. 
So we're going to do um, the last movement of our spine, which is some side flexion. We're going to start with um, a big wide uh, space in the knees. Now you don't have to go all the way up to your farthest range of motion, but get a wider base. And if you are feeling like you're not quite stable on your chair, you can scooch a little bit forward. We're going to take one arm over an ear and let the elbow rest on that thigh, and then we're going to go the other direction. And so some people call this movement back and forth blown palm. You can kind of see like a palm tree <laughs> being blown over to the side. Oh. Maybe your palm tree is just really heavy with coconuts and it's oh, leaning toward the water a little bit. Oh, I dropped these big old nuts. <laughs> the coconuts are giant. <laughs> What's always funny to me is seeing how, like the green ones are huge. And then when you take the little core part out of it, it's not very big. <laughs> there's, a lot, there's a lot of uh, plant material around that little white <laughs> center of the coconut. Oh. Okay, so we're gonna pick this direction now and stay there. And we're gonna roll a little bit back and forth. Now you can take your arm out of this all together. Put your hand on your thigh or on your hip and then roll the shoulders back and forth a little bit. So we're kind of doing that same little figure eight thing. If it feels okay to continue this sort of uh, movement with the arm, you can stretch a little deeper into the arm in both of these little places. So we're kind of moving slightly forward with the shoulder. That gets more into my uh, back. And this gets more into my side waist, okay? And so we're gonna take one more big breath here. And then we'll come up, use your arm to help you out. Oh, do those little movements side to side, back and forth. We're just going to let that sense that we're still bending sideways sort of subside a bit. So the fluid in the spine moves through the discs and that's why we want to move the spine in these different ways every day. It's because it keeps the discs healthy <laughs> and lubricated. So we're going to find our way in here on the other side. And again, you can take the arm out of this and roll a little bit forward and roll a little bit back. So that's the movement. You can continue with the arm. And then as you go back a little bit, you stretch more into that side. As you go forward, you stretch more into that side. And again, be kind. Back muscles can be tender. And I find often these, this muscle, the muscles in this area, especially maybe because they have so much connective tissue, which is a really resilient tissue. It does not stretch very well and it has a kind of memory. You can stretch it out and then it goes right back to where it was. <laughs> And that it sometimes holds on to memories of trauma or injury as well. And so, oh, if you've injured your back, we're gonna come on back up. You may find um, that the places in your back where you injured it in the past, like picking up a giant piece of furniture or something, are very tender um, and maintain a kind of tenderness or a resistance to stretching in those areas for a number of years. Okay, so we've done the body from pretty much from our neck all the way to our waist or hips. So we're going to do a little movement for our legs. We're going to start with um, kind of a warrior two shape. So you're going to turn sideways on your chair and back up a little so that your knee is right over the edge of your chair. Now if your chair is um, a little bit wheely, uh, <laughs> you might need um, to you know put the little locks on the wheels because we're going to take this other leg and stretch it out. Now some people will be more comfortable with the legs stretched straight forward and some people will be more comfortable with the legs stretched out to the side. And so you're gonna kind of find your way, your toes can turn the same direction that your thigh is pointing, or you can do more of that warrior two shape and turn the thigh, um, thigh and the toe in a little bit, okay? Because the warrior two kind of turns in a notch. Feel it out. If your hip socket tells you a story, you should listen to your hip socket and not to me. So we're gonna take the arms out and kind of reach them out. We're gonna leave the palms face up for this round. We get to the other side, we'll do them face down. So just noticing how if I turn my palms up, what happens to my shoulders? Can I keep my shoulders relaxed on my back? We're gonna do kind of a reverse warrior. You may not get very far because of the way the chair is holding your hip. And then we're gonna bring the elbow over to the thigh and we're gonna stretch up nice and long. Now here's the thing. We're opening this front section of the thigh, right? This is the section we're after um, and this hip. So we're trying to get to this, oh, this place where our hip flexors live to do that we may have to almost go towards the back corner of the chair. So we might need to move slightly to the diagonal on this chair. 
right? So you're just feeling like, can I feel that stretch right there? You might have to anchor through your feet a little bit. Mm, Cause it's a good stretch. <laughs> we're gonna do one more big breath and then we're gonna come back and we're gonna come around. So I'm gonna bring this leg back to the center and this is gonna be my support leg. This is the leg I'm gonna play with. So once I come back around, I'm gonna pick this leg up. Now, if you can pick it up so that you hold onto your foot and your thigh, do that. If that's impossible, put the tiptoe on the floor and you're just gonna hold it with your hand and wiggle it back and forth because ultimately movement is helpful. So we wanna be able to move. So we're trying to move the thigh bone in the hip socket. So my hips are stable, but my thigh is moving. And then you're gonna pick it up nice and high and see if you can cross this leg over the stable leg. Now I like to take myself a little further forward on my chair and a little bit further over, right? So that my, it's almost more towards the middle of my shin that's resting on the stabilizing thigh. You might want your knee over top, okay? And then you're gonna sit up tall and notice, do you feel sensation of stretch right here in this outer hip? It could be up here. It might be down along your thigh. It might be more closer to the joint. If it's in your joint, be careful, okay? Because joints are, um, we need to put a little bit of pressure on the joints. We need to give the joints some nourishment. We don't want to be abusive. So anything that feels sharper shooting, numb or tingly or heat, like a, a burning sensation in your hip socket, you should back off <laughs> for sure. So we're going to tilt forward if it feels okay. Like if I don't feel sensation here, I bring my chest closer to my thigh. This would end in one of two places. Either you stop when you feel something or you stop when your leg is on the back of your head. That's a joke, don't do that. <laughs> like, not today. If you work for the circus, maybe. So we're gonna hold steady, let this hip kind of anchor towards the floor, or towards the chair, get your spine a little longer. So rather than hunching your back, can you bring your belly button forward, the breastbone up? I'm gonna take two more breaths. Last big inhale. So come all the way up and with your exhale, you're gonna lean back a little bit, release the legs, give them a little movement. Oh, oh that's nice, y'all. <laughs> I love the way that feels. Guess what? We get to do the other side. How excited are you right now? I know it's exciting. All right, so we're gonna turn the other way. And again, I'm gonna bring myself so that my knee or the back of my calf is right up against my chair. Pretty darn close to the edge. I don't have to worry about falling off because this big thigh is going to hold me in place and this leg is going to anchor me. So again, I might stick it straight out in front or I might stick it slightly to the diagonal and then I might turn the whole thing in a little bit so that as I'm sitting here, I've got a warrior two shape. And now we're going to do the arms again and I'm just kind of stretching them out. They should line up with the shoulders. Don't worry about lining them up with the chair or your legs. And then palms down, we're going to reach out. And sometimes I find that when I have my palms down, like I might try to hunch my shoulders towards my ear, so allowing the shoulders to rest. And then we're gonna try again that kind of reverse warrior. And again, because this hip is locked on the chair, we may not get very far. Often we'll turn this hip when we do the standing to provide a little bigger range of motion. And then we're gonna stretch out. And again, what I'm after is this front part of my hip. I wanna reach that up and stretch through that area. This is my hip flexor area, especially if I have to sit a lot. Oh, they get tight, so it feels nice to stretch there. So I'm pushing my feet into the floor a little bit and really stretching. We're going to take one more big breath. And we're going to come on up. We're going to bring that leg around. Ugh. We're going to bring this leg around. And we're going to give it a rock the baby. So you're going to maybe pick the leg up, maybe just wiggle the leg on the ground so on your big tippy toes. And then we're going to rock, rock, rock. Okay, so now I'm gonna cross again and I'm gonna slide to the top of my chair and I may wind up with that leg a little bit further over. That's usually where I like mine. Again, you might decide you want your ankle or even your knee more towards the center line. Sit up tall. If you feel sensation in any of this area, right in, up here, around your bum, in the side, that's the area we're targeting. And then you might decide to lean forward into this a little bit. Don't do anything that makes your knee hurt, right? Or your hip socket hurt. A little bit of pressure is fine. Pain is not fine. Pain is difficult. Everybody experiences pain differently. So you have to go with your own 
notions of what pain means. You've been living in your body for a while. You're the only one who's an expert on your body, so you listen to you. Um, for me, the way I define pain is sharper shooting pain. Those are um, like sharp shooting sensations. I usually back away immediately. Usually my nervous system does it for me. But then the more mysterious ones are kind of burning or heat sensation building up in a joint. I usually back off of that. That might be damage. Um, anything where my body parts go numb, um, I back off or readjust, right? Because those are, they're not necessarily things I normally associate with pain, but they're sensations that something is amiss. So we're gonna take one more breath. We're gonna inhale and then come all the way back with your exhale, lean back, let go with your leg. Give it a little movement. Oh. All right, we just got another minute or two, so we're gonna do um, our uh, feet and ankles. So I'm gonna slide all the way back in my chair so I've got a good um, solid position. I'm gonna spin my foot, pick a foot, and spin that foot in circles. And then do the back, or the other direction, <laughs> the backwards direction. And then point and flex your foot so that you've got the ankle joint and the toes involved. So as you point, the top of the ankle, which is technically flexion, but whatever, point and squeeze your toes together. And then as you flex the foot back, spread the toes apart. We'll do that two more, one, two. And then we're gonna stretch out the back of our thigh. So I'm gonna reach down here and see if I can get hold of my big toe. And then I'm gonna stretch that. Or if that's ridiculous, I'm gonna pick my leg up with my hands and try to stretch that leg out strong. And just give the back of that thigh a little love, the back of your calves a little love. I'm spreading out my toes. Ooh, and then bend that knee and give it a little rinse. Okay, so then we'll do the other side. Pick that leg up and spin your foot as best you can in a nice big circle. It might not be a circular shape. <laughs> Whatever shape it makes is fine. Go the other direction. So we're getting the ankle joint moving in a lot of different ways and hoping to build a little synovial fluid into those joints and then pointing and flexing. And again, this is also an opportunity for us to squish and spread out through the toes, get a little movement in the oh, upper part of the foot. Two more, last one. And then either you grab your big toe and try to straighten out that leg or you grab yourself by the back of the thigh here and see if you can straighten out that leg. Okay, so then come home to your chair and you might need to at this point kind of go and get lunch. If you're doing this as your lunch break or you might have a few minutes where you can do a little meditation so you can rest in your chair, just like we did at the beginning. Although interestingly enough, my feet come closer to the ground <laughs> after I've stretched everything. Um, uh, you, so you could do this. Or you could lie down on the floor. You could lie down on the floor and put your legs over the chair and do a little bit of an inversion. And so you're just gonna end your practice in the right way for you. But this concludes our lunchtime practice. So thank you so much for joining me. Enjoy the rest of your day. Namaste, yogis.